So then how do you go about finding the words you provided in your paper, reassessment of the Portuguese contribution to the Papamento lexicon? Uh, yeah, good question. So the assessment I provide in that, in that article is, is not exhaustive in any way. So it was just a start, basically. But or a start it was actually the result of the research I had done for my PhD thesis in which I... Um, uh, uh, went in search of the origins of Papiamento, and uh, I think the origins lie in the Cape Verde Islands off the coast of the uh, West African coast, and uh, a Portuguese-based Creole is spoken there. And so I was looking for, for all sorts of correspondences between Papiamento and um, the Creole spoken on the Cape Verde Islands. And, and obviously I, I, I came across uh, uh, yeah, a significant amount of Portuguese-derived uh, vocabulary in Papiamento. I just wrote all those words down. And, um, and that, that was the start of, of, of that uh, assessment of Portuguese-derived uh, words in Papiamento. But I hinted at it. I think it's derived from, from or it's a, it's a descendant of, of Cape Verde and Creole, basically. So that it was originally Portuguese-based and the lexicon. And then when the Creole was transferred to uh, Curaçao, um, it, so, it sounds a bit romantic, but, but I actually think this is what happened. It sounds maybe far-fetched, but, but I've done, uh, yeah, this is, this is what I've looked at for, for four or five years. So... Uh, I do have some arguments uh, on the basis of which I, I think that was the case. So I think Papiamento emerged on the Cape Verde Islands, or precursor of Papiamento, then was brought to Curaçao, and then it was uh, what we say, what we call relaxified towards Spanish. That, that, that simply means that the original Portuguese vocabulary was to a large extent replaced by Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. So that happened on, on Curaçao, then the language was transferred to Aruba and to Bonaire, in the course of the 18th century, and then you, and then they start developing differently, right? Because then, then we have Papiamento on Aruba, we have it on Curaçao on Bonaire, and that. So from the uh, uh, mid 18th century onwards, basically these three dialects start developing, developing in different ways, in different directions, right? And had multiple centuries to develop, right? These dialects, mm -hmm. but this is just, we're talking about the mid 18th century, so so. Um, my, my math is not, it's not very good, but that's two or three centuries. And that's, that's a very short space of time. So these dialects have not really yet uh, developed far apart from each other. The thing right? is, if you look, uh, look at, at the distribution of Spanish versus uh, Portuguese words in Papiamento, you, you see something interesting, namely that uh, um, these, these Portuguese words tend to cluster in the, in the grammar of Papiamento. So grammatical words such as pronouns or question words or, or um, what else, uh, prepositions, they, they tend to be uh, Portuguese uh, based. So they tend to, to, to be derived from Portuguese. And, and uh, on the other hand, uh, words for concrete things, uh, for body parts, or for, for man, and, uh, man and woman, um, so for, for uh, uh, what we call content words, so, so concrete uh, yeah, things that you can actually describe, they tend to be derived from Spanish. There are indeed differences, and yes, they, they are subtle, so they are not uh, far-reaching in any way. So that means that the dialects on, the, on each of the three islands, they're mutually intelligible, right? So someone on Bonaire can easily speak to someone on, Papiame on, on, uh, on Aruba. Uh, and on, on Curacao and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so there won't be any kind of misunderstanding if people from different islands uh, communicate with each other. But there are some interesting differences, yes. Uh, for instance, you, you, you speak about Papiamento, and the people uh, of Aruba, they, they refer to their language as Papiamento as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, the speakers, uh, the, the the, the inhabitants of Curaçao and Bonaire, they refer to the language as Papiamento too. So they have the U at the end, where, uh, um, whereas in, on Aruba it's a Papiamento. So that's really just a subtle difference. Tell you. So if you ask them about differences right, between the islands, what they probably would tell you is, is that uh, the 
Papiamento uh, spoken on Aruba is more, more influenced by Spanish, right? Stronger, Spanishized, uh, and also more influenced by uh, indigenous languages, right? That were spoken there in the well, they were still spoken there in the colonial period, but not not at present, of course. Um, and then, if you ask uh, people from Curaçao, they will probably t tell you that that their language is a bit more influenced by Dutch as opposed to Spanish. Mm -hmm. Also by Spanish, obviously, but but comparatively stronger influenced by Dutch, and uh, and that that uh, Papiamento from Curaçao and Bonaire also in in general uh, uh, um, shows shows stronger resemblances to, to to languages from West Africa. So has has retained a stronger West African character, as opposed to to an indigenous uh, Amerindian character. With what the people from Aruba tend to think about their language. For instance, um, Eva Ekramer, um, a German researcher from the Universität of Mannheim, I think, she did some research on uh, passive constructions in Papiamento. And what she found is that the Dutch-derived auxiliary wordo, mm -hmm. and so, so they use this Dutch-derived auxiliary wordo for the passive, and you see that it's much more frequent on, on Aruba than on uh, Curaçao and Bonaire, uh, where they actually use a Spanish-derived auxiliary ser, ser or queda. So in this particular instance, um, you, you see uh, that, that that traditional view that pap that the Papiamento on Aruba is more Hispan Spanishized and the Papiamento on Curaçao is more uh, uh, developed more towards Dutch is, 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 is not not doesn't always hold true. O right. Overall, uh, more Spanish influence on Aruba, a bit more Dutch influence comparatively on uh, on Curaçao. But what the language that that I feel is making making uh, the most heavy impact on on Papiamento on all three islands is, is probably American English. Example, at the moment, but what I noticed last time I was on Curaçao and Aruba is just that people they, they code switch, right? You know, you mm -hmm. probably know what code switching. Uh, so just switching between two languages, mm -hmm. maybe you do it yourself. So what I noticed is is, is uh, code switching between Papiamento and English. At, at, in, uh, a lot, so people just using English expressions, uh, mix, mixing the papiamento up with, uh, mixing it up with English expressions, American English expressions, and uh, I, I, saw, I, I even, I even noticed just, just uh, people who, of, of whom I was sure that they were native speakers of papiamento, that they would just sometimes switch an entire conversation in, into, into English. Um, that's noteworthy, and that's where borrowing starts, right? Borrowing mm -hmm. starts with with code switching, with intensive contact between between languages. And at, at present, I think so. I, I think so, so if I would make have to make um, a prediction for what is going to happen in the next couple of decades, I think, well, like any uh, any language pop in, in contact with other languages, Papiamento is just going to continue borrowing words, right? Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you, you will you will see that the majority is going to be borrowed from English. The interesting thing to observe there, if you look at those 18th century Papiamento uh, texts, well, texts that they're just short, short fragments, letters and parts of letters. These letters are most of the time not even complete. But so we do have a couple of, of uh, written written uh, fragments of Papiamento from the late 18th century. And that is unique, yeah, by the way, for a Creole language to have such early uh, written attestations. That is unique for a Creole. That there aren't many Creoles that were already written in the in the late 18th century. Mm -hmm. um, so, but for Papiament, we're in the we're in the lucky situation that we do have uh, such such attestations, written attestations. And what you see is that that the Papiament from that day was already. Uh, remarkably similar to the Papiamento that is sp uh, spoken at present. So it was remarkably similar. Yes, there were some differences, but they were minor and subtle. They, they are minor and subtle. So what you would see is, uh, yeah, you would see a more Dutch-based orthography. Because what it, what it suggests is that Papiamento had been formed and shaped and had, had established itself and had, had um, 
already by that by that by that uh, in that period, right? In that early period, Papiamento was already a full fledged uh, language, so to say. Um, yeah, so all these changes that, that I spoke about earlier, so so going from a Portuguese-based lexicon being relaxified towards Spanish, this must have taken place a bit earlier, before the, the late 18th century. This must have taken place, uh, yeah, maybe in the, in the late 17th, early, early 18th century. And then by the late 18th century, uh, Papiament is really, is really if, uh, has settled itself, so to say, and it, and and stabilization of a language. It happens when when it becomes the native language of a larger group of people. Right, those go hand in hand. The nativization of a of a Creole and its stabilization. Right, that it, that it, that it, that the system becomes fixed, so to say. So we know from these letters that by that time, Papiamento must already have been. Uh, uh, the, the native language of, of, of uh, large parts of the uh, of the ABC island society, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also, and, and uh, what I what we I'm not, I'm not sure if you mentioned that in your in your question, but uh, these these written attestations they, they are from uh, uh, they they were written by by members of the upper class, right? By Sephardic mm -hmm. Jews, uh, Dutch people. The, the, the upper class on the ABC Islands was 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 not uh, homogenous homogeneously Dutch or anything far from that it was mixed and but and the two groups that uh, made up the upper class that period were the Dutch on the one hand and the Sephardic Jews the Sephardic Jews were a very important uh, minority within the upper class in that in that day, er, early day and age on uh, Curaçao and also on Aruba. The process of adopting Papiamento as their in-group and also as the inter-group language, so the language within the group itself, but also the language of communication between these different groups, right? What you see in most other uh, colonial areas, on most other islands in the Caribbean, is that the colonial language, so the language of the colonizers, manifested itself on, on, the, on those islands, right? We have the French Antilles, all the Creole spoken, they are French based. We have the, the, the English, uh, the West Indies, all the Creoles in Jamaica, for instance, the, uh, the, the, they are English based. The lexicon, the vocabulary is derived from the colonial language. But Curaçao, Aruba and Bonaira are exceptions because the colonial language, it was basically it was Dutch. But the Creole, the lexicon, vocabulary of Papiamento is not Dutch. Well, except for, for of course, for, for a couple of words, but they're they're mainly found in the periphery of the of the language. So really, the core, the basic vocabulary, Spanish, Portuguese, right? Uh, as I said, the traditional thought, and, and you will hear this from local people if you ask them. The traditional thought uh, that we find a bit more indigenous influences on Aruba and many many place names and and uh, names for 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 flora and fauna. Are indeed um, um, indigenous, uh, main, mainly uh, from from the Arawak family of, of uh, indigenous languages. Arawak and Caquetio, uh, yeah, I think Caquetio is how that is pronounced. So two two major families uh, and, and uh, languages of which were spoken, uh, speakers of which were uh, living on Aruba. Main, well, a bit more on Aruba than on Curaçao. The, 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 the historical the history behind it is that when when the Dutch um, took control of these three islands, they focused on Curaçao, and that's where they where they uh, uh, they turned Curaçao into into a slave trading base, right? And that initially they were less interested in Aruba and Bonaire. Uh, so on Curaçao, they they were they, they started to import slaves from West Africa. And, and uh, we think that most of the indigenous people were uh, were either violent, violently or, or not violently violently uh, uh, chased away from the island 
from Curaçao that indigenous people, uh, speakers of indigenous languages, stayed on Aruba for a longer period of time, so they had more chance to influence the, the Papiamento that was spoken. Do there. also in uh, Curaçao and uh, Papiamento and uh, in Bonaire and Papiamento, you also find a lot of indigenous influences, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, whether or not this is quantitatively or um, the indigenous uh, influence in, in Aruban Papiamento is quantitatively significantly higher than the other islands, it, needs, it just needs to be researched. Uh, the identity of people on the ABC islands is multi layered, literally, it's multi layered. So, they, yes, they, they, they feel part of the Caribbean, they are proud to be part of the Caribbean, right? So that, if you're proud of something, it's automatically part of your identity, right? Mm -hmm. So they are proud to be Caribbean, um, uh, but at the same time, they, they are proud to speak Papiamento. So that is a sort of, uh, which is not spoken in the wider Caribbean, but just on those three islands. So at the same time, they have this, this pride of speaking Papiamento. And that is shared between the three islands, right? This pride, and that is that is also something that really, really binds these three islands. So they, yes, they have this Caribbean identity, but they also have this ABC identity from from being speakers of Papiamento, which is which is a major part of their identity. Another part, important part of their identity, is being multilingual, right? Mm -hmm. The awareness of being multilingual, and that, that people are aware there, and, and, and they are proud of this. That, that, that they speak generally, and on average, they speak four languages. So that would be Papiamento, Spanish, English, and Dutch, right? Mm -hmm. And this is not, not, an, not an exaggeration. If you travel there, basically everybody, uh, you, 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 can, you can walk the streets, and even in, in lesser developed uh, neighborhoods, and, and you, you, you would just be able to... Uh, address people in, 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 in one of those four languages and you, you will uh, not have any problem whether you're a speaker of Spanish or, or English or Dutch or, or Papiamento. So.